Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 20th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. When I'm teaching classes, I'm sometimes going with the students over some recent detects in the Internet Storm Center. And one thing we came across looking at uh, some of our recent logs was a real marked increase in scans for port 60001. Now, this particular port isn't immediately recognized as something well known. So I set up a quick honeypot and well, really only took seconds for a query to arrive and it was a fairly simple HTTP request that exploited a vulnerability that's well known for a while now in some cheap Chinese DVRs. Pentest Partners originally did write a report about the JAWS web server found in uh, these DVRs back in 2016. And the report is almost comical in the type of vulnerabilities they're finding, like multiple unauthenticated ways to execute code, either via non-password protected telnet servers, very buggy web CGI's. Oh, and it also does send occasional still images to a hard-coded email address that's included in the default firmware. Now, for a while now, this vulnerability has been exploited against port 80, which appears to be the normal default port for the web server. But apparently the bad guys have figured out that there is a real good population of these DVRs listening on port 60001. Actually, it turns out that currently out of the 100,000 or so DVRs that show down lists, more than 70,000 are listening on this high port. Port. So I guess it was about time for someone to put these DVRs to work. If you do have one of these DVRs, probably your best bet is to just toss them. Don't try to patch them. Whatever firmware you're downloading, it probably just has a new set of similar vulnerabilities. And in the past, I have reported about the Pwn to Own contest, uh, which was put together by the Saturday Initiative. And typically, it does offer quite large sums of money for attackers that find new vulnerabilities in commonly used software. Well, as of about a year ago, the Chinese government does no longer allow Chinese citizens to participate in this particular contest. And instead, it has started sort of a knockoff of the pwn to own contest which has been for the first time conducted last week in the Chinese city of Chengdu. Chinese teams have been quite successful at past pwn to own contests and at this new event they also were able to find new vulnerabilities in a number of popular software packages like for example pretty much all browsers and also VMware. Now, what's actually almost more remarkable with this type of event is the products that did not get compromised. For example, iOS did not get compromised. Also, Ubuntu 19.10, CentOS 8, and Windows Server 2019 did not get compromised during the event. And earlier this week, I mentioned a problem with Microsoft Access after applying the latest security patch for Office 2016. Well, Microsoft now released a hotfix in order to solve the problem. So if you ran into these problems with the Access database, please check the knowledge base article from Microsoft. And Microsoft announced that it will be making DNS over HTTPS a component in Windows 10 in the future. Now, a release date was not announced, just some basic principles about how it is supposed to be implemented. Up to now, DNS over HTTPS was really sort of mostly a browser feature, not necessarily an operating system feature. So it's interesting that Microsoft announced its intention to actually bake it into the operating system. Now, Microsoft also states that they will not make any silent changes 
to the system's DNS configuration. This was sort of one criticism sometimes with DNS over HTTPS that browsers would just enable it and essentially sort of trick the user into using a resolver they didn't intend to use. So Microsoft apparently will make it somewhat transparent to the user, maybe an optional feature the user has to specifically enable, but not a lot of details yet. It's really more an announcement that Microsoft intends to move that direction and there also soliciting feedback from users. And Checkmarks looked into how Android is managing some of its permissions and found some issues that allow rogue applications to re record a video as well as to take pictures using the Android camera app. The root cause here appears to be that the restrictions on SD card storage are fairly lax. So once a user does allow access to the SD card storage, an application has pretty much access to anything on the SD card, also to camera files. They reported the vulnerability to Google and now released a quick blog post after Google did address some of these issues in an update to the camera app in Google's Play Store. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.